music with ties to World War II, including a landmark symphony, is the focus of this CSO program, led by Edward Gardner. In 1943, as Great Britain endured the Blitz, Rafe von Williams produced his fifth symphony. It's no battlefield document, but a gentle and serene work that seems to evoke England's pastoral landscapes. It's also a richly detailed score that avoids easy description. Von Williams began the symphony in 1938 after meeting Ursula Wood, his eventual second wife. He borrowed themes from The Pilgrim's Progress, an opera he was developing based on the Christian allegory by John Bunyan. He inscribed a passage by Bunyan over the third movement, perhaps a reference to finding solace in faith during this tumultuous period. Some listeners hear a dark undertow in the fifth, particularly in the scherzo second movement, but the piece also carries a message of hope, especially in the celestial finale. This performance marks the 150th anniversary of Von Williams' birth. Béla Bartók completed his second violin concerto in 1938 as fascism was spreading throughout Europe. In a letter to a friend, he voiced anger that supposedly educated people were being drawn to the Nazi ideology. While deciding whether to leave Europe for good, Bartok accepted this commission from the violinist Zoltán Seke. The concerto highlights an instrument that is central to Hungarian folk music. Accordingly, Bartok uses traditional scales and rhythms and hints of Roma fiddling. The composer revised the finale after Seke demanded a splashier ending. However, both versions were eventually published. Our soloist is Christian Tetzlaff. The program begins with the prelude to Act Three of Wagner's Die Meistersinger von Nuremberg. The opera is a comedy about a song competition staged by a guild of master singers in 16th century Nuremberg. The winner gets to marry a beautiful young woman named Eva. In a final monologue, the cobbler and poet Hans Sachs issues a dark warning to the populace to keep, quote, holy German art free from foreign influences. Decades later, this message resonated with Hitler, and the opera was used in Nazi propaganda. But Meistersinger has been taken up by modern directors who have worked to decouple it from its thorny past and highlight its many strengths, its humor, warmth, and musical radiance.